Hi there, welcome back <coughs> to, uh, uh, let's see, where are we? I am on, uh, trying to, uh, find out a way to protect myself against the evils of this program called Explorer. Now, I've managed to protect documents. And it's I can't remember how I did it. Um, see, like... Take this directory, right? <coughs> no, take another directory. Sudoku. Ah, everyone loves Sudoku. Suppose I want to um, rename this file. No problem. Okay. I can even edit the file. These are all great puzzles, by the way. <coughs> These ones in particular. Uh, so now, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna draw a square. Okay, now I'm just going to say say corn. That was this one. You can see already in the picture here that it's a square. Uh, now um, I can also delete these. Not a problem. I said it there. I could if I want. I can restore it. So everything like that is okay and fine and working with normal. So I want to delete this. Now it stops me. Okay. So if, if I, for instance, um, see if I can. Uh, Make it try to reproduce that bond. Mm -hmm. Uh, if there's a directory involved in, in the deleting process, then I'll get a prompt, and it just simply won't allow me to do it unless I authorize it. And the authorization works. Also for creating a directory. Okay, I can create one, right? No problem. Try to delete it? No. I, I need to. Authorize the deletion. And I can even double check after the authorization that it was the one I wanted. <coughs> so, so far that's perfect. And that's what I want to do to everything else. Um, now, uh, it also. Uh, will not allow me to rename a directory without authorization. See? So that's good. That prevents me from that kind of mistake. So now this entire documents directory is safe. The only problem is, um, you know, it's a little bit of a hassle when it comes to making new directories. But I want to reproduce that, and I want to do that to all my folders. And uh, see, I got there in a kind of roundabout way. I went to uh, security, and um, first I took uh, I took ownership of it. Now I don't know if I need to do this part. Maybe initially I do, but I could put it back.
And I don't know if I need to do that either. But I'll do it. Oops. Just keep going. Okay. Now this thing is takes a minute to uh, refresh itself. <coughs> um, yeah. Okay, now, what I did with that, I must have removed everything. Somehow everybody got removed. Can't do that. Okay, now this is not inherent. Okay, let's get it. Uh, and first, I gotta take full control. Um, I'll get one container. Oh, no, everything. No. Okay. Okay, now that's good. Now that uh, this is, I, I know I got to this point. Now I want to bring them back. Uh, First, I want to add system back. Just so I don't lose, I don't lose it. Full control. Okay, so now there's the two of us. Now you to me. Permission. So an explicit denial uh, for delete. Okay. Hi there. Uh, sorry for the interruption. <coughs> uh, I didn't do that exactly correctly. Um, when I uh, what is that permissions? 
when I selected this deni the denial of delete, uh, we have to select just uh, <coughs> folder and subfolder. Now I had files included in that. That's no good because then you can't delete or modify any files. So that <coughs> that's one thing. And you'll notice as well that there were two entries for system. Uh, one inherited and one not. You, you can get rid of the non-inherited thing. That, that was just temporarily there in case I made a mistake and I needed to get back, get control back somehow to that directory. So it can be removed. Uh, the only non-inherited um, uh, property for this folder is the one I want. Yeah. <coughs> The do not deny delete denial of the directory to the deletion. Everything else is okay. You can delete. And bring them back. And uh, modify. No problem. Okay, so th those are the steps. I guess I can maybe I can cut out the rest of the video and just t tell you that the rest of the video concerning this part. Okay, well I'll try putting that in here. <coughs> maybe I can cut out what I already have. Um, so going through the steps, so I'll go through step by step, starting from the uh, temp here. Uh, right click, go to property. You have to be an administrator. Go to the security tab. Go to advanced owner edit. Make take ownership of the directory and also everything underneath it. And I think it said, what did it just say? I have to close some files or something probably. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay, so now I'm the owner. Back into here. Um, and, uh, add yourself to the uh, list of uh, users. Now you might be able to do this here. Take full control. Okay. <laughs> Temp is not a good directory for me to be doing this in. Oh my goodness. Uh, see, the recorder is, is uh, placing its recording into Temp. So I'll have to uh, choose a different directory. Uh, well, maybe I can do this without. Um, and that and I still got full control. Um, <clears throat> right. Now the thing is what you've got to do is um get rid of this. Okay. Now I still got full control, so I should be able to do that right now. And that will just leave me, but it's still just for me. Hopefully nothing's going to crash.
Maybe it looks okay. Yeah, it's just lost, but yeah, the recorder's uh, I don't know, we can, I can show you. It's building this file. Is it changing? I don't know. We'll find out. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that won't um, be a problem. Okay, now. So now that just leaves me. Now I want to add the system and now let it have also full control ok now the file just go down and sides are up alright so here's me and system now I better add another user so that this thing won't crash. Something that I'm a, I'm a member of. And oops. Okay, that was all trouble with this. Uh, administ I'm, I'm an administrator. How about users? Well, I am an administrator, so it should be okay. Full control. None of these are inherited, right? See? Alright, now. Now, if I change, now I'm going to change my own permission by doing this. Now that removes all of my permissions. So, oh, no, 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 I can't. <laughs> I'm afraid. Well, if it crashes, it crashes. All right. And now, actually, I should do this is built in one step. Okay. All right. This is looking good. If we record, recording still going. Uh, And here I change it on the one. It's me, I think I'm the one I need. Okay, do not delete um, Still going. Uh, I'm not sure what that don't. Oh, okay. I think I just made the same mistake again. Just folder and subfolder not inherited now what is this one? I don't know why it's there but I have to remove it the rest are in all inherited oh I see it's not allowed hmm.
Anyway, all in subfolder is denied. Okay. Okay. Now, everything else, nothing for me except that. Never use that the way it usually is. No, I should be able to delete a file. I should be able to create a file. Uh, uh, but uh, when it comes to doing something like this, no. So temp is now saved. Okay. To, um, now, uh, if anybody knows the answer to this question, and uh, the real answer, uh, I wouldn't mind finding out. I, I will try and find out. Uh, but uh, I believe, and I'm pretty sure it's true, that um, an expression in C uh, which involves, uh, might involve m many operations. Let's take an example with if and then, um, okay, let's, let's say I have a registry uh, thing. Um, Alright, R dot get um, we're always talking about food. What do you like? Remember, I'm watching his tutorials. That's Bucky uh, Roberts, the uh, tutorial guru. Uh, tuna, tuna, he loves tuna. Okay. Uh, now, presumably, presuming I, whoops, presuming I have a keyword value, I want to look that up. Okay, now that, that goes here as a reference in out. Well, no, so just out. Okay. Now, what you. What you want to say, what everybody in the world would love to be able to say at this point is and dw equals something. Uh, with a brand of tuna. Uh, my brand my brand. Then do something. Right? Now, uh, I, I used to have lines like this in, in my code, and not with this compiler, as it turns out. So I don't know about this. The problem is I don't know what the C specification is on this, uh, but I believe that it, it follows just from the rules of C that DW here uh, needn't. Um, even though the evaluation is from left to right, right, for an and, okay, it doesn't do this one first, it does this one, and then this one. Uh, and if this one fails, it doesn't do this one, obviously, it doesn't have to. Uh, even though this is completed, this this part might be completed. That in no way implies that DW has already been retrieved here. And the reason is because of something something they call um, a synchronization point. Or, or that uh, synchronization something point I think. Synchronization points in C 
are those places uh, where you can say where you can finally say that an expression. So this has to do with expression. Uh, Uh, when, when an expression has been fully evaluated and all side effects have been um, uh, resolved, okay. So um, no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm making this up. Don't. <laughs> I'm not quoting any C spec because I haven't read it. But I, I think it's something like this uh, definition. Um, A sequence point for a given expression uh, is a, let's say, like within this, the C script, uh, is, is the section The script after which um, after which the expression and all of its side effects have been evaluated. At that point, it would be safe to say that to reference DW. This is not a sequence point, uh, and the reason is uh, note the sequence, all sequence points, almost all. <coughs> uh, okay, well, a sequence. Point is introduced by the placement of the semicolon following the expression to be evaluated. That's one way. <clears throat> so, for instance, um, at, at this point here, DW tuna is, is has been set to zero, right? But I can't according to the specification. I can't say that this has been set to zero by the time I get to beef here, so it would be an error to do that. Right? Although, in a declaration, no, 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 I don't think you can assign more than one thing. You can, you can do this if it's a, like a literal, if I believe. That should compile. Mm, of course. But you get the idea. Well, the way I found out about this, of course, is, was by the usual method I find things out, uh, and that is uh, because of a bug. I had uh, some code that was running perfectly well, 
and this is the worst case right? always under debug <coughs> in the debug build and when I switched to the release build it didn't work and uh, so the, the release build was also optimized uh, so there was no point in uh, you know, adding debug information to it um, but you know I could print certain things out and eventually uh, I just it just dawned on me that I had learned this from this guy this, a friend of mine who also worked at that same point of sale company uh, this guy called Gary he was a little bit of a nutcase but he had a he had a a degree actually in computer science you know he, he were he wrote a compiler, you know, like everybody else has to. I mean, if you do, if you, if you take a course in programming, uh, everybody's forced to go through the exercise of writing a compiler. So you, that means that forces you to learn all of the rules of the language, right? Your compiler has to implement uh, the, the rules, the syntax correctly. And so he was a great resource for finding out answers to these sorts of questions. And then I would show him this a line like this, and I would say, "Is is it okay for me to test DW Tuna at this this point? Uh, even you know this function has been called, so it's been filled in, hasn't it? No, no, because that's a side effect, right?" This DW tuna it will will be valid by the time you enter here. This is another type of sequence point that doesn't have a semicolon, um, but um, it's a conditional expression. Uh, in order to evaluate, once a conditional expression has been evaluated, uh, then on the by either by the next semicolon, this is the equivalent of a semicolon. I think that's what I think because you see, uh, well, okay, this. Look at this, okay? Now th this is a, um, although it's not clear, this will give a, this will give a compiler warning. Can you guess what the warning is? What do you think the warning is going to be? Well, I can tell you right now, the warning is going to be um, uh, not all control paths return a value. See? That's because it's just not clear that this is what this says. Right? This is the equivalent of. Oops. That's also the same. Right? And so, therefore, there, there is a case where theoretically it might not return a value. However, if I do this, then I won't get that one because the, the semicolon and ended ended this statement. It, didn't, it 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 put the sequence point in. You know, here I'm getting um it says empty controlled statement, right? And it found that by by the fact that there's a there's a semicolon here, right? And a, this is a what we call a controlled statement. Whatever follows the, the conditional is is a controlled statement, and it's empty. It exists because there's a semicolon. Sometimes uh, in the old days, people used to write that just to be clear that the intent is for it to be empty. And um, uh, because they didn't have this this magic warning, right? 
Uh, well, no. See, no. The the way to to uh, to silence that one one way is to make it a non-empty control statement by putting brackets around it. Now, it does not consider this to be an empty statement uh, because uh, because it's been surround it's been surrounded by this uh, these brackets. So somehow these brackets indicate something that something I don't know what exactly I don't need the semicolon either okay. but um, I can tell you that uh, anywhere in here DW tuna is valid uh, and if I had a semicolon here anywhere here, DW is valid. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if it's valid. Yeah, yeah, it's valid. Let me do it this way. Valid there, but not valid. Oh. The valid here? Now let's see here I don't know. I think it is valid. Because it follows the it follows the the, the the controlling expression and I think one of the rules maybe it has to be, right? Otherwise you wouldn't be able to say And we know that, that that's fine, right? And that's correct. All right. Now, I've gone on for a long time explaining explaining the uh, explaining that this thing, okay, which I'm not even sure is true, but I wanted to find out and, and see if I could just somehow uh, make it fail. You know, like I get this thing to to you call a function that takes like a pointer or a reference or something and have that thing not evaluate until I get out of the conditional and um, <laughs> it's quite funny actually well I know I know that uh, from past experience that these debug builds it never fails right it always works uh, now let me see. Okay, I set that to ten, and the registry key is called Apple. And um, now actually, I have a get put. Oh, so I don't have to type it in again. Um, and I'll, also, I'll keep this as zero. I'll forget about B for a minute. Silence that warning. See. Now get put. Um, what this thing returns um, is usually true. Uh, it only returns false if, if uh, a system error occurred. That is, uh, if if it can't find the, the value, whatever tuna is, uh, then it's going to set it to this thing, right, and nothing changes. If it does find the value, then it's going to replace whatever you started out with with the new value that it got from the registry um, and, and return true as well. In both cases, it'll return true. And um, But if it, if it can't get it from the registry, then it will return false. An example would be um, if uh, there's already something with that name, uh, but it's not a D word type, it's a string type, so it'll fail. Uh, there's also a hidden Boolean argument that you can put in if you want. 
if you really wanted to. Which is a return value. And that indicates whether or not the calling of this function modified anything. So did it did tuna just did the value of tuna just suddenly change? Um, you know, uh, well, basically, if the only way it would change would be as if it was initially just just created, right? So I should really call that uh, created. Was created. Was just created. And uh, that will be, oh my god, I hope you didn't hear that. That will be true uh, if it didn't exist. So the first time through, this, this thing should come back true. Recreated. Or, I was going to say or. Okay. So that's going to be this whole thing will turn out false, and so that should that but that should be true the first time in. <coughs> and I might as well print print it out. <coughs> um, yeah, print it. not clear what to put. <coughs> but we can certainly print out the value. You know, we don't know what this is going to say. Okay, I think that turns it into a string literal. Um, not a TS string. And so that's the two values that we care about, right? Registry Wow, four. that was control um, and the control left click gives me a double click. Oh, capital D. That was clever of me. There's a reason why. Uh, I just know that there's a rule with that. Never, never use bools in templates. I, mean, I wanted to have a, a default reference value, not pointer. Okay, so now I can run this program. Now, I mean, I, it should, for well, this part, is going to be true, right? Just look. 
is it uh, put is going to be true uh, get put will return true because I know the thing doesn't exist so this should be true this is because we're running in debug mode it's going to be true so it's going to be true and it's going to bring that up right two minus zero and that's what we set it to okay now we'll go to the registry and uh, here it is now let's change it to 10 now what you're going to print out uh, get put, and we start out with zero, but um, uh, it's not it's not going to be zero. But this will still return true because um, uh, we were able to retrieve it. This will also be true, and we should again print it should print out the first line. And there you go. A well hex. How I no hex? I use decimal there. Now this seems to indicate that this is absolutely fine, right? The last time uh, well the last time it went in here, we don't know if it's I should have, uh, I, I should have, uh, yeah, this is the read time. And print out the same thing. Because we don't know. If it, does it get set or not? I'm, sa I'm starting it out as, oops. Wow. As zero. Google just, this Google type is um, just an end, basically. Oops. Okay. So see, it did set it. Well, actually. At this point, yeah, but we don't know what it was at this point. That's the problem. What we could do get rid of this again. <laughs> I just want to see if I can get it to happen in debug mode, then you could look at it. Now, I know that uh, uh, put s uh, re returns a, a number. Doesn't matter. Oh, but this is an or. Let's make it an and. If this is or, that this this expression won't get evaluated because it's already become true. So to force this, I'm going to have to say that. Change it to, uh, uh, so I've changed the meaning of this expression. So if it was just created, well, then we know it has to be zero, right? Wait a minute. No, no, no. Now put put s is al always true, right? So I can add. I can keep it as an or. That's a constant. That put s bit. It's just um, too far. Okay.
Okay. Right. Okay. So, so now I'm just I'm just including this uh, along here. I know this part is going to be true, so that won't change the value of this part. And so now we've got the same condition essentially, except that we're going to get to see what the value of this boolean was. <clears throat> while it was speaking, while it was determining, making this determination. Would it be false or true? We know it'll be true here. And, and, and what in the program? Oh, it's a number to join. Oh no, that's okay. This is a return play. And let's join. What now see now why didn't it? Oh, because this was false. I see. I see, I gotta put that one ahead of there. There we go. Okay, well now you see where I'm going with this. I hope you know, I, I won't get to the end, obviously. I'm taking too much time. But what I did was I am. Um, Okay, so it's true at that point. Okay, so turns out both of these things got, were set after this was evaluated, which you would naturally think would be the case. But I don't think that the C spec says that it is the case, and that would be undefined behavior, and I, and you should not take advantage of it. And that bothers me. So what I did anyway was I, I switched this to uh, tr trying to to cut, to reproduce the the behavior. I, I put on uh, all the optimizations and stuff. But, you know the, the highly optimized code might not set these variables uh, during the test, right? Uh, because it doesn't need to, right? Um, it knows, and it knows by the by the C language that it doesn't need to. No, not because the code the code is using it. No, it might be too smart to realize, or to not realize. <laughs> it might be too smart and realize that okay, a pyramid it has to. Drop some of its optimizing, uh, optimizing and ability to make sure that these expressions are uh, are properly evaluated. But that would be incorrect. If it's a bug, it should it should be a bug, and it should be an evident bug uh, because it's not that wouldn't be portable. And it's supposed to be a compliant compiler. The problem is when when you switch over to um, Optimize code, and um, I'm going to show you that next time. I'm going to show you first. It's just how smart that darned op optimizer is, and how difficult it is to to outwit it. And then a strange discovery I found, and uh, and I'll get to that next time too. And uh, I haven't figured that out. The thing I discovered, I haven't figured it out yet.
But there's a magic number. There's a, there's a magic number, and I even wrote a program. You see this program, this printout here? I wrote this in, in our assembler stuff. Uh, okay, I'm starting with 30. And what I'm doing is, uh, doing is I'm trying to mimic some of their code. Just try and figure out, understand what it does. And um, CX is a number that's incrementing. And, and um, this part is just to print out character line feed and uh, print a number um, it's weird it has to do with the number the number C C C D okay you take that number C C C D and multiply it by something then eva uh, and the, the carryover is that the top part of the of the D word in this case ends up in DX. If you now in their case if they divide by four, right? Four actually No, that's right, yeah. They divide by four, so I divide by two. Uh, and um, then you take the difference between the CX you started with, which was what you multiplied by the CCCD. So you take the upper word and, so, and of, of, the, uh, of the result of the multiply and subtract that from uh, CX, or one way or the other, and that produces a number. But it produces the number, and as you increment CX, it produces the numbers in this pattern. Now the weird thing about the pattern, and, and this is right around the line where I'm using um, count of, you know, they have a macro or something called count of. It's supposed to tell you how many elements there are in, a, in an array. Now look at this sequence. One. Okay, so now CX was started out as five. Uh, and uh, let's see, now, I may be, there may be two ones that might be missing a line. And I let me make it bigger. Come on. All right. We started out at five, and then we got. Uh, one, then am I? Let's see, I'm incrementing it every time. Am I? Yeah. Then I get zero and zero, and then one, one, and then a two, and then one, one, two, two, and then three, then two, two, three, three, and then four. And three, three, four, four, and then five. You see what what's happening? It's a pattern. You get uh, four, five, and then six. But whenever, <laughs> whenever you get, regardless of the fact that these numbers are going up linearly, uh, every now and again you get only a single number. And that single number is always one bigger than the last one. See? 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. So this <laughs> multiplying by that strange number has this, has the odd effect that uh, it produces a sequence. Uh, it produces this this sequence where in um, uh, it, it's always uh, number 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 x number number x number number x and uh, where the x's are increasing by one each step so every one two three four well every fifth every fifth on every fifth iteration you get a a new number right very odd because it's a it's a multiplying and, and a subtraction and something for you to think about okay see you